right, so today, guys, we get to talk about calorimetry. Calorimetry is the study of energy, metering energy, so measuring energy in chemical reactions. Does this relate to calories? Yes, it does, because the joules that we measure, um, our energy in in chemistry can be converted uh, via a very simple dimensional analysis to calories, food calories. Yes, we yes we can. Okay. Matter of fact, the worksheet I'm going to give you tonight has that information on it. All right. Oh, look, I just said that calorimetry is the science of measuring heat and using temperature change. Um, there is a kind of calorimetry that's called constant pressure calorimetry uh, that measures the change in enthalpy of a reaction. So we can actually calculate those delta H's that you guys saw in your homework assignment two nights ago. OK, so we usually look those up in a, in a, in a table in a book or on, you know, Google. Um, but you can actually measure them. That's where they came from originally. All right. So um, specific heat capacity is something you guys discovered yesterday when you did the POGO. Specific heat capacity is the letter C, is the letter small c in the equation that you guys came up with. Okay. Um, specific heat capacity is, by definition, the amount of energy required to raise one, I'm sorry, requires to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So you remember that number 4.18 from, from the, uh, from the Pogel? Uh, here's another fact for you guys. Specific heat capacity is measured in this manner. Q equals MS delta T. Um, I know that yesterday you guys were told to use the letter C for constant, um, but the textbook uses the letter S. Do you think I care whether you use Q equals MS delta T or Q equals MC delta T? No. Okay. If, if you like MC delta T, that's fine. Okay. If you like MS delta T, that's fine also. Um, I think most of what I've got has MS delta T on it just because that's what the textbook says. Okay. Q is a measure of energy. It's always going to be in joules for us. Uh, M is mass, always measured in grams. S is the specific heat capacity, which is joules per gram degree Celsius. And delta T is a change in temperature. Changes in temperature or changes in anything are always measured the same way. Final minus initial. Is it possible to get a negative delta T? Yes, if you take final minus initial, it's possible to get a negative delta T. What does that mean about Q? It will also be negative. So when your temperature change is negative, your Q will be negative. When your temperature change is negative, that means you're losing heat, right? So energy is being lost. So energy should be negative. And yes, that would indicate a exothermic if we're talking about the system. Okay, so here is an example of a problem. We've got a coffee, coffee cup full of water. Um, we want to calculate how much energy is needed to heat it up from room temperature, 20 degrees, to 90 degrees, which is probably about a good drinking temperature. We need to assume that the coffee cup contains 200 milliliters of H2O. Okay. Milliliters. milliliters. You're right. But the, the, the fun the fun part here is is that one gram of water is exactly one milliliter. So the conversion for that doesn't even need to be shown. All right. They're looking for energy, so Q. Uh, Q is equal to M. M is the mass. The mass that we're looking at is 200 grams. We're not even going to show that work. The S is specific heat capacity, which according to the chart that I just showed you guys is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Where's 
One milliliter is one gram for water. Okay. If it's orange juice, um, I'm going to either have to provide you with a uh, mass or I'm going to have to provide you with a conversion factor to do. I'm not going to do that. It's always going to be water. Okay. If I tell you milliliters, it will be water. And then the delta T here is going to be the final temperature is 90 minus 20 degrees Celsius. And there's three sig figs there. Okay. Don't be confused. You multiply 200 by 4.184 and then multiply it by 70. If you have three sig figs in your answer, you're going to come up with 58,600 joules as the amount of energy that the water needs to absorb to go from 20 degrees to 90 degrees. Okay, boom, we're done. Easy? Okay. Okay. So, these slight... So we can determine the enthalpy change, the delta H of a reaction, by measuring the temperature change, by measuring the temperature change of the water, the surroundings in a reaction. Um, usually, this is done in some sort of a um, system where you can keep the pressure at a constant. Uh, there's a picture there of um, a really, really cheap setup that would measure calorimetry at a constant pressure as long as you weren't doing anything really major. Um, we could do that in lab, two styrofoam cups, a top, a stirrer, and a thermometer so you can keep the system closed so the pressure stays the same. Um, whatever, the basic idea here is this. If you measure the energy change, the temperature change of the water, you can calculate the energy change of the water. The energy change of the water would be due to any reaction that happens in it. So therefore, you're able to calculate what the energy change of the reaction is by measuring it indirectly, by measuring the surroundings instead of the system directly. The, pro the problem is this. If you're, measuring the, if you're measuring the energy change of the system, it's going to have the opposite sign as the energy change of the surroundings. So whatever the water winds up being, it's the opposite sign for the system. So they say Q of the surroundings is equal to the negative Q of the reaction, the negative Q of the system. This, this sort of thing does make an assumption it assumes that there's no heat loss to the calorimeter, which is an assumption that's not, necess well, not necessarily true. It is not true. You, all right. So here's the example, guys. We've got a, the idea is this. Remember that calorimeter you just saw on the last slide here? Here it is. Okay. It is a cup of water. It has a thermometer in it. You know how much water is in there because you measure it before you put it in. Okay. So the problem sounds like this. You take a five gram piece of metal and you heat it up to a known temperature. In this case, they're heating it to 120 degrees. Okay. It's then placed into the calorimeter. You know how much water is in the calorimeter. In this case, it's 100 mils. And you know the initial temperature of the water because you take that temperature. It's 25 degrees Celsius. And then you sit there and you wait. What's going to happen to the temperature of the water if you put a hot piece of metal in it? It's going to go up, right? What's going to happen to the temperature of the piece of metal? It's going to drop. When will the metal stop dropping and when will the water stop rising? When they get to the same point, okay? So you basically just sit there and wait. You wait until the temperature of the water changes to a point where it stops, According to, the, according to the word problem here, it stops at 89.2 degrees Celsius. We're being asked to determine what the specific heat of the metal is. Here's how we tackle this problem. Most of the time, we're given enough information to figure out how much energy the water absorbed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split this problem up into two parts. One part's the water. I'm going to calculate how much energy the water gained. 
I know the mass of the water, right? What's the mass of the water here? 100 grams, right? 100 Gs. I know the specific heat capacity of the water because that's the only one that I've asked you guys to know. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we should be able to figure out the temperature change of the water. What was the final temperature of the water? Okay, the final temperature of the water was 89.2. Good. What was the initial temperature of the water? 25 degrees Celsius. Some of you guys are way too smart for me, and you already calculated that's a negative number, right? Negative 60. No. No, it's a positive number, right? 89.2 minus 25? 64.2? All right. 64. Right. It's always final minus initial. Okay, so we got a positive temperature change, right? Uh, so we take that 64.2, we multiply it by 4.184, and we multiply it by 100. It looks like there's supposed to be three sig figs here. So I'm rounding this to 26,900 joules. And since the water gains temperature, does this answer make sense? It looks like it's a positive amount of energy, right? My question for you guys, assuming the calorimeter didn't absorb any energy, that's the assumption we make, how much energy did the metal give to the water? 26,900. So if I want to deal with a, another problem, I know one more piece of information. I know that the metal gave off 26,900 joules. Giving off means that what kind of sign should I put on it? Okay, negative. So when I move this over, I change the sign. Because the metal gave off energy, the water gained it. Um, the mass of the piece of metal, do I know that? 5.00 grams. Do I know the specific heat capacity? So I'm going to write S because the book uses S. And then do I know the temperature change of the piece of metal? What's the final temperature of the piece of metal? 89.2. I'm going to subtract the initial. I'm sorry. I'm going to subtract the initial, which was 120. I messed up Emily because she calculated for me again. All right. Uh, Emily, what do I get here, a positive or a negative number? Negative 30.8. Okay. Um, so I've got a negative on the right side. I've got a negative on the left side. What's going to happen? They'll cancel when I divide, right? So S will be positive. When I calculate S, if my answer made sense, there's a typo on that last slide. If my answer made sense, I should be able to look at this list and I should be able to come up with which metal that is. I'm going to need to change that slide to figure out which one it is. But uh, I would be able to then say, hey, it's um, 0.174. Uh, the closest thing to 0.174, if the answer was 0.174, which looks like gold, no, mercury, 0.174 and 0.140, they're pretty close. It would be closer than that, though.